By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah, even the darkest night will end, and the sun will rise and shine, and the sun will rise and shine. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyid al-Anbiya'i wal Mursaleen Amma ba'd fa'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim Bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim As-salatu wa salamu alayka ya Rasulullah wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Habib Allah As-salatu wa salamu alayka ya Nabiji Allah wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Nur Allah my dear viewers of Madani channel, welcome back to Rise and Shine. Each and every single day we have a new topic. What is today's topic? It's another special topic. Allahu Akbar. As usual, mashallah, we always have special, we always have beautiful and important at the same time, simultaneously, important topics, my dear viewers. But we always begin by listening to the beautiful verses of the Holy Quran. Now remember, whilst the Quran is being recited, then we must pay our attention, or give our full attention to the recitation of the glorious Quran. It is along with the Urdu translations. Sallu alil Habib Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad Sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim Mein Allah ta'ala ki panah mein aata hoon Shaytan-e mardood se Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Allah ke naam se shuru Jo nihayat meherban rahim wala Falamma wada'atha Qalat wa rabbi inni پھر جب اسے جنا بولی اے رب میرے یہ تو میں نے لڑکی جنی اور اللہ کو خوب معلوم ہے جو کچھ وہ جنی اور وہ لڑکا جو اس نے مانگا اس لڑکی سا نہیں سَمَّيْتُهَا مَرْيَمَ وَإِنِّي أُعِيذُهَا بِكَ وَظُرِّيَّتَهَا مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ اور میں نے اس کا نام بریم رکھا اور میں اسے اور اس کی اولاد کو تیری پناہ میں دیتی ہوں راندے ہوئے شیطان سے فَتَقَبَّلَهَا عَرَبُّهَا بِقَبُولٍ حَسَنٍ وَأَنْبَتَهَا نَبَاتًا حَسَنًا وَكَفَّلَهَا زَكَرِيَّا تو اسے اس کے رب نے اچھی طرح قبول کیا اور اسے اچھا پروان چڑھایا اور اسے زکریہ کی نگہ بانی میں دیا كُلَّمَا دَقَلَ عَلَيْهَا زَكَرِيَّ الْمِحْرَابَ وَجَدَ عِنْدَهَا جب زکریہ اس کے پاس اس کی نماز پڑھنے کی جگہ جاتے اس کے پاس نیا رزق پاتے قول یا مرغیم انہا لکی هذا قولت ہوا من عند اللہ ان اللہ یرزق من یشاء بغیر حساب کہا اے مریم یہ تیرے پاس کہاں سے آیا بولی وہ اللہ کے پاس سے ہے بے شک اللہ جسے چاہے بے گنتی دے ہنالک دعا زکریہ ربہ قول ربی حدنی من لدن کا ذریت طیبہ یہاں پکارا زکریہ اپنے رب کو بولا اے رب میرے مجھے اپنے پاس سے دے ستری اولاد اِنَّكَ سَنِعُ الدُّعَا بے شک تو ہی ہے دعا سننے والا فَنَادَتْهُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَهُوَ قَائِمٌ يُصَلِّي فِي الْمِحْرَابِ أَنَّ اللَّهَ أَنَّ اللَّهَ يُبَشِّرُكَ بِيَحْيَا مُصَدِّقًا بِكَلِمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَسَيِّدًا وَحَسُورًا وَنَبِيًّا 
تو فرشتوں نے اسے آواز دی اور وہ اپنی نماز کی جگہ کھڑا نماز پڑھ رہا تھا بے شک اللہ آپ کو مشتا دیتا ہے یہ کا جو اللہ کی طرف کے ایک کلمہ کی تصدیق کرے گا اور سردار اور ہمیشہ کے لیے عورتوں سے بچنے والا اور نبی ہمارے خاصوں میں سے بولا اے میرے رب میرے لڑکا کہاں سے ہوگا مجھے تو پہنچ گیا بڑھاپا اور میری عورت بانج فرمایا اللہ یوں ہی کرتا ہے جو چاہے قال رب جعلی آیا قال آیتك اللہ تکلم الناس ثلاثت ایام الا رمزا عرض کی اے میرے رب میرے لیے کوئی نشانی کر دے فرمایا تیری نشانی یہ ہے کہ تین دن تو لوگوں سے بات نہ کرے مگر اشارے سے اور اپنے رب کی بہت یاد کر اور کچھ دن رہے یعنی شام اور تڑکے یعنی صبح اس کی باقی بول اور جب فرشتوں نے کہا اے مریم بے شک اللہ نے تجھے چن لیا اور خوب ستھرا کیا اور آج سارے جہاں کی عورتوں سے تجھے پسند کیا اے مریم اپنے رب کے حضور ادب سے کھڑی ہو اور اس کے لیے سجدہ کر اور رکو والوں کے ساتھ رکو کر سبحان اللہ وی لسننگ ٹو دی اسٹوری آف حضرت مریم رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ آف حضرت ذکریہ علیہ الصلاۃ والسلام گریٹ پروفٹ آف اللہ سبحان و تعالیٰ حضرت ذکریہ علیہ الصلاۃ والسلام وینیور ہی ووڈ کم ٹو حضرت مریم رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ حضرت مریم رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ ووڈ آلویز بی بی پریئنگ شی ووڈ اسپینڈ ہین انٹائر لائف شی ڈیڈ ورشپنگ اللہ سبحان و تعالیٰ اینڈ شی ووڈ آلویز Fine, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants her fruits, those which were out of season. Hazrat Zakaria alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa would come and ask her, where did you get these from? And she would say that these are from my Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted me these. So this was one Hazrat Maryam radiallahu ta'ala anha, the mother of Hazrat Isa alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa Hazrat Maryam radiallahu ta'ala anha, she would be given food. And in fact, this does relate to our topic today. But maybe, hopefully, if I do remember, I shall come back to this point, my dear viewers. But along with this was the story of Hazrat Zakaria alayhi salatu wasalam. Yes, Hazrat Zakaria alayhi salatu wasalam was mentioned too. And about Hazrat Zakaria alayhi salatu wasalam, it said that he reached a very, very old age, him and his uh, own wife too. They reached a very old age, past the age where a person could normally have children. You know, his, uh, also his wife, she was past the age where a person, normally a human, where they can normally have children. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised them, gave them the good news of a child. That was Hazrat Yahya alayhi salatu wasalam. That they were given the good news whilst he was praying. The a angel came to him and gave him the good news that he shall be having a child inshallah and this child shall be named Yahya. Now my dear viewers, 
Alhamdulillah, after having listened to the glorious Quran, we then move to the Naat of the greatest of all mankind, the peace of our hearts and our minds, the most generous and kind. Yes, he was the most generous and kind. The noble messenger, Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam, the last and final messenger, the last and final prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Let's listen to today's Na'at Sharif. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. مسند رفعت رسول اللہ کی دیکھنی ہے حشر میں عزت رسول اللہ کی دیکھنی ہے حشر میں دیکھنی ہے حشر میں رسول اللہ کی لاو رب عرش جس کو جو ملا ان سے ملا لاو رب عرش جس کو رسول اللہ کی بجت ہے کونین میں نعمت رسول اللہ کی خیرات دیتا ہے خدا ہر وقت تیرے نام کی جس کو ملا جو کچھ ملا جتنا ملا صدقہ تیرا بچتی ہے کونین میں نعمت رسول اللہ کی وہ جہنم میں گیا جو ان سے مستغنی اور ہم بھی کالی وہ کری ان کا خدا ان سے رسول اللہ کی اور نہ کہنا نہیں عادت رسول اللہ کی دیکھنی ہے حشر میں عزت رسول اللہ کی ٹوٹ جائے گے گناہ کا
مبشر کو کھل جائے گی طاقت رسول کے حشر کو کھل جائے گی طاقت رسول کے اور اے رضا خود صاحب رسول کی مجھ سے کب ممکن گے پھر مت حد رسول کی تجھ سے کب ممکن گے پھر مت حد رسول کی عرش حق ہے مسن فعت رسول کی دیکھنے گئے حشر میں دیکھنے گئے حشر میں عزت رسول کی صلو الحبیب صلی اللہ تعالی علی محمد Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Dear viewers of Mandarin Channel, you are watching Rise and Shine. Alhamdulillahi azizal. We have just listened to the kalam. MashaAllah, no doubt, we shall inshaAllah azizal one day come and listen to, we shall listen to and understand finally the true status. This shall be on the day of Jum'ah. We shall really understand the status of, of the greatest of mankind, Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. And on that day, everybody, everybody shall see the greatness, the rank of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam, the last and final prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear viewers, alhamdulillah, today we have a new topic. What is today's topic? A topic which we have spoke about previously, possibly even more than once, but alhamdulillah, every time we speak about this topic, we, we tackle, you can say, or we speak from a different angle, a different perspective. MashaAllah, there's so much information, my dear viewers of Mandarin Channel. Now, today we shall be speaking about tawakkul. Tawakkul means trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tawakkul, my dear viewers of Mandarin Channel, as well as contentment, because these two things, they come hand in hand. Where on the one hand, we have the work called trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on the second, my dear viewers, contentment. Being content, being satisfied. Being satisfied with what we have already. This is really important, subhanAllah. There are two things, my dear viewers. We always think about happiness. We always speak about happiness. We wish, we desire happiness. We desire eternal happiness. And we always say that, I just wish I can be happy. Some people, you know, who may be depressed, who may be sad, just, I just, all of, what's the harm in just wanting to be happy? This is what we all say. And we always think, I just wish I could be happy. I wish if I had this, then I'll be happy. If I had this car, then I'll be happy. If I had this house, then I'll be happy. And different people who are in different stages, financial stages, you can say, they all require something which will make them happy. So for some, they may not even own a car. Some may not even own a car. And they may think even the cheapest of cars, they may think, if only I had a car, any car, I'll be happy. Some, they would have a good car. But they think, no, this particular supercar, this luxurious car, if I had this, I would be happy. For some, cars is 
one thing my devi was but they may be thinking helicopters planes i wish i had this private jet if i was to have this private jet i would be happy so one thing we do learn from this is even in terms of houses some may not even have a shelter they may be living on the street and such people would say if only i had a house i said i would be happy others they're not content with what they have you know some would be content and happy let's stick to the word happy for now and yes i am keep using this word and i have a reason to continuously repeat this word so some would say yes if i had one room i would be happy just with one room i would be happy others would say no i require an apartment i require a house and some would require you know a huge house with a separate room for a wardrobe a separate room for the shoes on so many other things my dear viewers with a swimming pool in the back they say if i had this i would be happy so what we learn from this is everybody has some sort of desire some sort of wish no matter what level no matter what stage we are at we have some sort of wish and we say if i had this if only i had this i would be happy even children children will say if only i had this game this console then i would be happy they would say if they were to go to the shop if only i had this chocolate i would be happy if only you know my mom and dad were to buy me such and such toy then i would be happy this person has this if i had that i would be happy so one thing is happiness something which we all desire everybody desires happiness to be happy what is happiness yes money brings happiness i would say money brings happiness um luxuries they bring happiness they do some people say money doesn't bring happiness it does bring happiness but we don't understand what happiness is cars yes cars do bring happiness but we don't understand what happiness is good big houses bring happiness successful businesses bring happiness i'm not saying these things are bad by the way now speaking about happiness money brings happiness wealth brings happiness properties bring happiness toys for children they bring happiness these things do bring happiness but what we must understand is that there is one thing known as happiness and there is another thing which is known as contentment contentment satisfaction are they both the same no they are not happiness and satisfaction are not the same we say money doesn't bring happiness but it does if i was to be given a million pounds right now it would make me happy i would be over the moon wow i was given a million pounds if i was to be given a supercar right now i would be over them i would be happy a person naturally he would become happy whether that's wealth or whether that's something else whether that's respect whether that's honor if i was to be given a position of power it would make me happy yes my dear viewers naturally a person a man he becomes happy at somebody's wedding if when i was married or if I, allahu akbar when i was married my dear viewers i was happy so subhanallah these events which take place they make a person happy but the question is do they also bring satisfaction do they also bring contentment this is the question what is the difference between happiness and contentment happiness is something which only lasts for a short time now we can all think of it well whatever age we are at when you were given a toy a new toy this is with a baby this is with from a baby to you know an elderly man or woman when a baby is given their first toy they are happy but let some time go and now they want something new but that toy did bring them happiness if it was for you know somebody received their results they got the best results a stars now i think it's changed but they got a star it would make them happy but later they, you know they move on or maybe they don't get those same results a person who's given a car he becomes happy she becomes happy 
But with some time, they think, I want another car. I want another toy. If a person has moved to a good area, he has a big house. He becomes happy. They think, now I want another house. Satisfaction. Contentment. Is I was given this, and alhamdulillah, I, yes, it brought me happiness, but I am also content in that I do not desire, I do not wish for more. With what I have, I am pleased with this. Alhamdulillah, this has been so beneficial for me. It said that you can buy a house, but you cannot buy a home. What's the difference? We are moving houses. We are moving homes. What's the difference between the two? Sometimes you can have a house, but it doesn't feel like a home. Meaning it doesn't feel like a home. You may have lived with your parents for a very, very long time. You may have lived with your parents for a very long time and then you've moved out. But home is home. Why is it that we love our own city so much? If we were to move to another area, why is it so strange? Because yes, we may have bought a new house, but it doesn't feel like home. Home is the feeling. Home is the feeling, my dear viewers. So we may be happy, but the question is, are we satisfied? Are we still in need for more? Are we always wishing for more? Wishing to have more? This is the question. This contentment, my dear viewers, with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, for some he has given us less, for others he has given them more. He has given some more, he has given others less. For everybody it is a test for them. But my dear viewers of Madhani channel, along with this, what is required is the wakkul, trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now what is trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Hazrat Maryam anha, bringing it back to the story from what we listened to previously, from the verses of the glorious Qur'an. Hazrat Maryam anha, she would always worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She would spend her entire time worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when Hazrat Zakariya alayhi salatu wasalam would come, he would see that Hazrat Maryam anha, she would have fruits which were out of season, which were not from the... Um, present at that time, the present season, out of season fruits, she would have ripe, perfect, right in front of her. And he would ask her, where is it you got this from? And as we heard in the glorious Quran, that this was, that this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted this food to Hazrat Maryam radiallahu ta'ala anha. Now Hazrat Maryam radiallahu ta'ala anha, she was given something. And she was content. She did not wish for more. She did not turn to other things. No, she continued to pray to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She did not leave the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to either show these to other people or anything. No. With what she had, this brought her happiness, no doubt about it. She was given food. But also contentment. She was satisfied with what she had. She did not require any more. But later, my dear viewers of Madani Channel, when Hazrat Maryam, now remember this Hazrat Maryam radiallahu ta'ala anha is the mother of Hazrat Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. That um, girl who, well not longer a girl, but she becomes a woman, no doubt about it. When she gives birth to Hazrat Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. And there's no medium of any man, my dear viewers, no. A single mother, a single virgin, pure mother, giving birth as a miracle to a child, Hazrat Isa alayhi salatu wasalam a great prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, Hazrat Maryam radiallahu ta'ala anha, when she was during the stage of when she was to give birth, she goes to a land quite far away, she moves. And she sits under a tree. And Hazrat Jibreel alayhi salatu salam comes. Hazrat Jibreel alayhi salatu salam, he kicks the ground and water comes gushing forth. And Hazrat Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam then orders Hazrat Maryam radiallahu ta'ala anha. Now this tree, there was no fruit on the tree. But when this water was produced, automatically and very quickly, this undoubtedly was another miracle. But the, the tree turned, you can see it turned green. And fruits 
would come forth. But Hazrat Maryam anha, she was ordered to pull the branch. Hazrat Maryam anha, she was ordered to pull the branch. And then dates would fall and she would be able to eat them for some food. Now, throughout the life of Hazrat Maryam anha, she was always given food. She did not have to do anything to be given the food. She would just continue worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Food would be granted to her. But at this stage in life, Hazrat Maryam radiallahu ta'ala anha, she had to pull a branch in order to, for the days to fall. So she had to do something now in order for her to gain fruit. You could say dates are a fruit. Dates are considered to be fruit. So she had to do some sort of action, some sort of act to earn this fruit, my dear viewers. What lesson is learned from this? When a person, when they are on their own, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised us sustenance. So it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gives the sustenance. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gives. He gave Hazrat Maryam radiallahu ta'ala anha. But now when that same person is a parent, when that person, person is a parent, yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises sustenance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still gives sustenance. But my dear viewers, you must earn it. You must do something. You must pull the branch in order to gain the sustenance. Now, with this, with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, we must be content. But we also must have the tawakkul. We must also have trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall give. But what does tawakkul mean? Tawakkul doesn't just mean to give. Now there's a famous story which has been mentioned. It said that there was a, a person who would always worship. He would spend his nice days. He would always be in the masjid just worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every day a person would keep come. He would give him some pieces of bread. And each and every single day this person, he would take this bread and he would uh, consume this bread. He would eat this for his iftar to break his fast and then he would uh, fast the next day he would fast nearly possibly every single day and he would spend his days just worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his nights worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fasting during the days my dear viewers one day he thought to himself tawakkul trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have I given complete trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when I am taking food from another person, from another human being, so he thinks, maybe this is not true tawakkul. Maybe I should just wait to be given it by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. So this is what he does. The person comes to give him bread again, and he refuses. You know, he says, I do not wish to, to take the bread. I have complete trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall give me food. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall give me sustenance. So now an entire day passes. Nothing comes out of, as you would say, out of the blue. No. But again, the next day that person comes and time is passing. That is, this person is hungry now. And in hunger, he falls asleep. And he's brought before the court. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to him that food was sent and you rejected it. Why did you reject it? This person says that, Ya Allah, I thought I'll have true tawakkul, true trust in you. I thought I won't take it from your creation. That I have complete trust in you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that that was me sending you food. That food was sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this person, my dear viewers of Madani Channel, he says that the person who fell asleep, the person who refused the food, the person who is the worshipper, he says, I saw the other person who would bring me the bread. He was there too. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to him that, why did you stop bringing the bread? He says, Ya Allah, you know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states that you send the bread and you continue sending the bread. And you shall be granted Jannah in return. There are many lessons to be learned from this, my dear viewers. But one, in terms of tawakkul. Now, what does it mean by tawakkul? We must do our own part. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is giving, even if it's by worldly means. 
But this must be by halal means. This must be by halal means, my dear viewers of Muslim, inshallah. If it is by haram means, something which is impermissible, then undoubtedly it's haram. Anything by haram is, is haram, my dear viewers. Let's inshallah move to our daily reminder and then we shall return to this. So Allah ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah, Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Sayyiduna Ghothi Pak and their altruism, their self-sacrifice in order to benefit others. A very famous waqiya narrated by Sayyiduna Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani themselves. They mentioned that once whilst I was traveling and due to their devotional and spiritual exercises, they mentioned that I was completely in such a state where I was in dire need of food. I was in starvation. And whenever I would come across food which was upon the floor, I would intend to go and pick it up and consume it. But then I, when I would observe around me, I would see other poor people trying to do the same, looking for food just to consume so that they can relieve their hunger. Now due to seeing this scene of the poor people, Sayyidina Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani mentioned that I would leave those pieces of food that it was rightful to take for them. Because of starvation, they reached such a stage where they felt that they would even pass away. They would leave this world. This is the amount of qana'at, the, the contentment that they had upon the will of Allah, but also the sacrifice, the hunger, the uh, struggle and strive against their nafs. And what happened? They would leave this food for the people. And if we look at our own state today, my dear respected viewers, that food within our home and the delicious food and cuisines that we have in our home, what is our state today? We are constantly fighting that why have you taken it first and other other in petty matters, my respectable viewers. So I'd just like to leave you with a message that Sayyidina Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani's altruism, their self-sacrifice for others was so unique was so astounding that today we are inspired. We are completely awestruck by such a personality even existed in the world. And the generosity was such that whenever any wealth came into their, uh, into their presence as a gift, they would give it to the poor people. And I would just like, my dear respectable viewers, for us to take this lesson that we should try to sacrifice what we have for the sake of other people. Remember my respectable viewers, our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam has stated, Ad-dunya mal'oonatun, mal'oonun ma fiha illa ma kana lillahi minha. The world is accursed, and whatever it is within the world, this is also accursed, except for whatever is for the sake of Allah. And in another narration, the Prophet ﷺ is reported to have said, حُبُّ الدُّنْيَا رَأْسُ كُلِّ خَطِيئَةٍ حُبُّ الدُّنْيَا رَأْسُ كُلِّ خَطِيئَةٍ That the love of the world is the head of all sins. So my dear respectable viewers, let us try and adopt this way of our pious predecessors to sacrifice our need for others and also to remove this love of the world from our hearts. May Allah give us all the ability to remember and act upon what has been said. Ameen bijahin nabijil ameen sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. My viewers of Madhani channel, you are watching Rise and Shine. That was our daily reminder. Speaking about happiness, contentment, tawakkul. Trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the wakil and contentment come hand in hand. We spoke about happiness. Happiness is something which is temporary. Being human, we become happy, we become sad. We are full of emotions. This is what the humans are. We are humans, we are full of emotions. Anybody, everybody, this is something we must remember. That everybody at times becomes happy, everybody at times becomes sad. There is no exception to this. Although it may not seem like this to you, when we take out our social media, we are spending so much time on social media, on all of these you know, various platforms, we are seeing people on their social media pages 
who, what do they do? They are sharing so many pictures, they are sharing pictures, they are sharing videos. And all of those pictures and videos they are sharing, what are they? Smiles. They smile for the picture, don't they? Everybody wishes to smile. Now when you are looking at another person and you are seeing they are smiling, you are having a bad day, then what does a person think to himself? The person thinks that, look at this, everybody is so happy, it's only me that is sad. But we forget, my dear viewers, that we may have a social media page too. And we may put our pictures up on there too. But tell me, does anybody ever put up their picture whilst they are crying? Whilst they are sad with a normal face on? No. Everybody smiles for the picture. There's a filtering system, isn't there? Those things which we choose, we can put on. Those things which we don't choose to put on, we won't put on. And the majority of the times is when we are excited, when we are going out, when we've gone out for a meal, we'll take a picture and put it up on our status. When we've gone on holiday, we'll put it on our status. So another person who's feeling sad, when they are to look at this, they think that everybody's happy, it's just me that is sad. And this is what leads to depression. Yes, it's said that I think if I remember correctly that 80% of people, they, when they take out their phone, they are sad. And due to their being sad, they take their phones out and they go onto social media. And they go onto social media maybe to make them happy. But 80%, may Allah Ta'ala forgive me if I'm wrong, but remember this is just an article anyway. So we're not, I'm not saying it's completely perfect, completely true anyway, my dear viewers. But according to them, it's 80%. Now, 80% of people who go onto social media, why? Because they are sad, so they'll go onto social media, maybe they'll get a bit happy. When they put their phone away again, 80% become even more saddened than when they took their phone out to bring them happiness. This is the uh, effects of social media materials. Yes, all of these things could be used for good too. No doubt about it. All of these things could be used for good too. Alhamdulillah, we have our Dawat Islami pages. We have our Madani channel pages. For those of you that are not aware and you are on social media, if you're not, then you don't need to worry about it. But those that are on social media, please do follow, mashallah. We have uh, Facebook page for Madani channel. We have a YouTube Madani channel which you can watch inshallah. Please do follow, please do join those pages too. So again, happiness could be momentarily. It, it is something which is not forever. But being humans, at times we are happy, at times we are sad. Accept this. Me, myself, at times I am happy. Right now I may be excited. It may be I hear some bad news, immediately I am saddened. Somebody has passed away, immediately I am saddened. This is what happens where people, somebody is born, I'm happy. This is normal for humans to be happy sometimes and to be sad sometimes. But it continues to change. What we most always have is contentment. With whatever we have in our lives, we must be content. I have a phone, I must be content with my phone. So you know, Alhamdulillah, I have this and it works for me. I don't have no problems with it. Alhamdulillah, Subhanallah. May Allah, you know, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has blessed me so much. He has given me a luxury which so many other people do not have. The food which I have been given, I should be happy. Alhamdulillah, I should be content too. Thank Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. It is sufficient for me. Now contentment is the opposite to greed. When a person is not content, he's greedy, he's always wishing for more. He's always has, you know, he's, no, he's never calm, he's never satisfied. When a person is satisfied, they can sit back and they can think about other things with an open mind. A person who is relaxed is good for their thinking too, for their psyche, it's good for their brain. When a person is truly relaxed, a person who's greedy is always thinking, you know, how can I make more money? Businessmen are always thinking, how can I make more? There's nothing wrong with this. But if it's greed, then it's a problem. If it's due to greed, my dear viewers, then it's a problem. So we must, on the one hand, be content with what we have. 
on the other Madi views, we must have to work in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That I have done all I could do. I leave it now with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Madi views of Madani channel, inshallah azzajal, we shall listen to some of the um, examples of contentment from the life of the Prophet sallallahu So previously we have discussed the wakkal from the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Today inshallah azzajal, we shall hear about the contentment of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. The last and final messenger, the Prophet Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam was no doubt a role model. He was the best of all creation. We can look to him for any situation whatsoever, we can always turn towards the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And inshallah, that's what we shall do after listening to the daily hadith sharif. So Allah al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah, Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Dear viewers of Madani channel, in today's hadith, we're going to learn a dua that the Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam would make very often. And this dua is something that we can implement in our day-to-day -day activities, in our day-to-day -day lifestyle as well. And try to memorize this dua as well. The hadith is mentioned in Abi Dawood. That the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would make this dua, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min ash-shiqaqi wa nifaqi wa su'il akhlaq. Which means that, oh Allah, I seek protection from you, from disunity, hypocrisy and evil character. So if you try to memorize this dua as well, implement this and we try to recite this whenever we supplicate in the court of Allah. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min ash-shiqaqi wa nifaqi wa su'il akhlaq. And from this dua we can understand that disunity, hypocrisy and evil character are traits which are bad. They are something which is bad in Islam, something that we should try to avoid. And Islam is a, a way of life. Islam teaches us how to live life at its full. And that is by not having disunity amongst our family members. Unfortunately, today we see that many families, they have family discord and brothers are not speaking to their own brothers. Sisters are in discord with their own sisters. There's issues going on in the family, domestic abuse, these type of problems. And Islam is completely against that. Islam encourages that we unite the family, that we unite people, that we join and mend relations and not break off ties with anyone. In terms of hypocrisy and evil character, this is things which are even known to be bad amongst even people who are non-believers, people who are non-Muslim. They also accept the fact that hypocrisy and having an evil character is something which is bad. And Islam came to remove this illness of evil character, remove this illness of hypocrisy and make people become good human beings, good citizens, people who are civilized, and people who bring goodness to the community. So we as a Muslim, inshallah, try to make a benefit towards the community, a good impact, a positive impact through one's character, through one's akhlaq, his, his, the way he deals with people, the way he looks at people, the way he talks to people. They should all be on a very just and civilized manner, something that people are attracted towards. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. My viewers of Madani channel, you are watching Rise and Shine. Today's topic, my dear viewers, the work of trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well as contentment. Now, contentment from the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi was always content. We must understand this. Some of the incidents. I was just thinking, which incident can I take? And nearly all of the main incidents we take, we find, you know, perfection. Really, trust in Allah subhanahu wa taala, as well as contentment of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Whether we take a major incident from the seerah of the Prophet or whether we take his lifestyle, 
In both of these, we come to understand contentment, my dear viewers. Let's take, for example, let's come to the first thing, my dear viewers. The first thing, where we say is the beginning. We, we, we can't begin from the birth, but let's begin from when the Prophet wasallam would spread the deen. He would, which he continued to do throughout the, uh, up until the end of his uh, apparent uh, life, my dear viewers. When he first received the revelation, he was at the age of 40. He began to first invite those people to Islam who were the closest to him. But what happened? The Prophet ﷺ, his own family, his own tribesmen, his own tribesmen, they reacted in a very harsh manner. They reacted extremely harshly, my dear viewers. So much so that they threatened him. They beat him. They harmed him. Mazallah, you know, one individual, he went and strangled the Prophet ﷺ. That same individual, he placed the, the leftover ruins of a camel's uh, organs, mazala, the dirty ones, he places upon the Prophet ﷺ. But whatever the Prophet ﷺ went through, whatever the Prophet ﷺ suffered from, he was always content. He had the wakil in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He had that complete trust. So much so, so much so, my dear viewers. But everybody rejected him. Even his own uncle, Abu Talib, he says to him, he says, maybe you should leave this now. Maybe you should stop this, whatever it is you are doing. But yet, the Prophet ﷺ replied that if you were to place the sun in my one hand, the moon in my second, I would never give this up. I would never give this mission up. He had complete the work. And even if his uncle was to leave him, now it was very important. His uncle played a huge role, Abu Talib. He played a huge role, my dear viewers. What was this is that his uncle had, in a way you can say, given him a visa. His uncle had given him security. His uncle was the chief of the um, tribe of the time, the Banu Hashim. At that time, his uncle was the chief. So if his uncle was not to give him security, then people would be allowed to try to kill the Prophet ﷺ. People did harm him, but nobody ever tried to kill the Prophet ﷺ. Why? Because they feared that although the, his own tribesmen will hate him, they have so much pride that they will fight, it will cause a war. Which 15, 20 years it has been, there has not been a war. During this time, there hadn't been a war for about 15 to 20 years before this. Before the Prophet ﷺ had invited people towards the uh, deen of Islam, towards the religion, my dear viewers. So it was very important for Abu Talib to give him security. But yet, the Prophet ﷺ laid his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whatever the Prophet ﷺ had, he was pleased, he was satisfied, he was content. The Prophet ﷺ was given the option. He could have been a king. Abu Talib himself says, the people say, the heads, the noblemen of the Quraysh, they all came to the house, to the house of Abu Talib. And they said to the Prophet ﷺ, what is it you desire? Do you desire wealth? We will give you mountains, we will tell everybody to come together and we will give you gold. Do you desire kingship? We will make you a king. Do you desire women? We will give you all the women in the world. We will give you anything to stop this. The Prophet ﷺ did not do this for greed. There was no greed. The Prophet ﷺ, he, he was on a mission. He was given something by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was a true prophet, the last and final prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We must understand there can never be a prophet after Rasulullah. He was the greatest of all prophets. He did not wish to be a king, he did not wish for power, he did not wish for wealth. Why? Because with whatever he had, he was happy. He was content with whatever he was given. Other situations, Badr, he had the wakul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was the battle of Badr, 313 against 700 or 1000, but then it was reduced when some tribes had left. So 313 against 1000 or hundreds, double, double or triple their number. He had the wakul, he had trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
the Prophet وسلم, had trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was his trust. And then contentment with whatever he had. Where subsequent to the battle of Badr, there was Uhud. The Prophet وسلم, had lost a tooth or part of a tooth. He had hurt himself, yet he was content. Hudaybiyya, which the companions themselves were just, they were so shocked by the events of Hudaybiyya, by the treaty that the Prophet ﷺ accepted it, that in a way they did not know what they were doing. This is how shocked they were. They, it's like a person turns into his own world. If somebody's speaking to him, he doesn't know what's happening. This is the state the companions were in. They were thinking, how did the Prophet ﷺ accept such? But they came to realize that within the Quran, it's known as the Fath al Mubin, a clear victory. Hudaybiyah was known as a clear victory. The Prophet ﷺ was content, although it was biased, although it was completely one sided. But the Prophet ﷺ, with whatever it was, it was by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet ﷺ was content. These are big incidents in his life. Let's look at small incidents. The Prophet ﷺ, he never lived in luxury, no. He laid on the floor on a simple mat, such a mat which would leave marks on his body. He would, he would lay down on such a mat, which Hazrat Umar Farooq who says that when he rose from his mat, I could see marks were left on the body of the Prophet Although, how rich were the Muslims? He was the leader of all the Muslims. And the Muslims had gained power, had gained wealth by this time. He gained so much wealth, so much sheep, so much cattle from the war booty that as far as I could see valleys of it, immediately he gave it away, he gave it to the poor. Because he was content with what he had. Sometimes for months, sometimes for months, the uh, pan, you could say, the cooker would, uh, they, they would not, not be a cooker, it would just be lighting fire to cook food. Fire would never be lit sometimes for months in the house of the Prophet Sometimes they would go hungry for days. Not eating two or three days the house of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ was always content. Sometimes all they had was water and dates to eat. This would be the meal for how long? For so long. But yet with whatever the Prophet ﷺ had, he was content. This is a lesson for me and you. And there are so many things in the world. But those people who are rich, they only want more. When will the rich finish? Think about it. There's no harm to want things. You know, I want nice things. I like a nice house. I like a nice car. I like a nice, you know, whatever is around me. I like for it to be nice. This is normal. But these limits, my dear viewers, that with whatever we have firstly, are we happy? Are we satisfied with this? Have we thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this? And secondly, are we not doing it out of greed? Is this something which is maybe taking us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? These are questions we must ask. Let's see what Ghulami Rasul has to say about the weather. So Allah al Habib, Sallallahu Ta'ala ala Muhammad, Sallallahu Ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. बारिश के मौसम में बिजली के पोल के करीब नहीं जाना चाहिए और रेस तो वैसे भी नहीं लगानी चाहिए इससे आपको या किसी दूसरे को नुकसान पहुंच सकता है प्यारे बच्चों बारिश में हमें बहुत केयरफुल रहना चाहिए ना बिजली के स्विच को टच करना चाहिए और ना ही घर की बेल को और बिजली के खंभों से भी दूर रहना चाहिए क्योंकि बारिश के वक्त इन चीजों में करंट हो सकता है और इनको टच करने से आपको इलेक्ट्रिक शॉक लग सकता है तो एहतियात कीजिए और सेफ रहिए Wa ala alihi wa sallam. And if you are watching, rise and shine. That was our Ghulami Rasul. Allahu Akbar was raining there too. Allahu Akbar. And if you was, Ghulami Rasul did get quite angry there, didn't he? When the kids were racing. And he gave some good advice. Um, and yes, this does affect us even today. Um, in terms of having wet hands, etc. And 
electricity, things like this. Uh, please do careful. There are incidents even today of deaths caused. And this is even within the United Kingdom that I'm speaking of. Um, due to mistakes, isn't it? Mistakes, things we must be careful of, my dear viewers. Nowadays, we do have in some places, but people are watching from all over the world. In different places, it would be different. Uh, but nevertheless, please do be careful. Allahu Akbar, my dear viewers of Madhuri Channel. The weather, subhanAllah, whatever the weather is, we should say subhanAllah, we should say alhamdulillah, we should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because if we have a lot of rain, my dear viewers, there are people who do not have rain. Do not have rain, I'm not referring to they've not had a rain in a month, nor two months, three months, six months, no, I'm talking about a year or so. People who have not had rain in a year or so, really, there are people like this who are living in such places where they never get rain and they wish for rain. They wish for rain because they can't get water. They can't get clean water. The rain water would be the best. It would be, it would be like Eid to them. It would be a festival, my dear viewers. This is the situation which people are living in. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us rain. It's a blessing. We should be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear viewers of Madhuri Channel, that's all for now, subhanAllah. That they're welcome to always have trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't run for the worldly things. Or even if you do wish, you do desire worldly things, there's no harm in it. As long as, my dear viewers, you are not lacking, or due to this, you are not lacking in your deen, in your religion. If you are striving to earn money, and due to this, you are missing your salah, then there's a problem. If you are striving to gain fit, and due to this, you are missing your fasts, then there is a problem. So we do have desires, we do have wishes, we, we wish to become possibly richer, stronger, um, you know, faster, depending on which field um, you are in, what you take interest in. But none of it should be at the expense of our deen, of our religion, our religion comes first, my dear viewers. That's all for today. Inshallah, we shall be returning tomorrow. For now, continue to send salawat upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in abundance. Also, continue to watch Madhuri channel for the rest of the, the day. Inshallah, there shall be many more better programs, not with me continuously uh, mixing up words and making mistakes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me for all those mistakes I have been making. Sallu ala al-habib Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad Sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam By the grace of Allah By the grace of Allah Even the darkest night will end And the sun will rise and shine and the sun will rise and shine